Bizarre Brain Comics. Hello, comic book friends. Welcome to Bizarre Brain Comics. I am Gary, your host. This is where I like to take a look at some older comics. I talk a little bit about the characters and creators and then examine the stories and the art. Okay, and this time, I want to take a look at this book here. This is Marvel Presents number one, Bloodstone. Yeah, Marvel Presents number one, Bloodstone, from Marvel Comics 1975. Written by John Warner, with art by Mike Vosberg for the first part. And Pat Boyette for the second part. And the char main character in this is Ulysses Bloodstone, who is a fictional character appearing in Marvel Comics. He is an immortal monster hunter. He first appeared in Marvel Presents number 1, 1975, created by Len Wein, Marv Wolfman, and John Warner. And Bloodstone was developed as a 10-page backup series for Where Monsters Dwell. And Mike Vosberg was assigned part one, and Pat Boyette was to do the rest of the series, but Where Monsters Dwell was canceled with The Living Mummy. So the first two parts were rescheduled for uh, uh, Marvel Presents number one. And the second part of a longer storyline slated for number two. The plot had to be altered to fit into the two issues. And because of publication delays, Pat Boyette became unavailable for, for issue two. Most of the rest of the planned stories appeared as a backup in the Rampaging Hulk black and white uh, magazine in 77. And it uh, resulted uh, resulted in the death of Bloodstone. And later, his daughter, um, Elsa Bloodstone, took over as the monster hunter. And uh, the Bloodstones recent, relatively recently uh, played a role in the... Uh, the Marvel movie universe by appearing in altered forms in uh, uh, Werewolf by Night, which was on uh, for Halloween, which was on what, what was it Disney Disney Plus? And we don't do the streaming thing, so I haven't seen it yet. I gotta wait till I can get it on DVD, and I really want to see that because I am a werewolf by night fan and i really loved the trailers and the reviews that i saw featuring the the, the cool black and white imagery paying tribute to the the old uh, um uh, wolfman series so i want to take a little look but first yes but first Want to tell you about uh, your opportunity to help me maintain this channel, uh, not by a Patreon and not by a, a merch store. The closest thing I've got to a merch store is this, where you can buy your own original artwork featuring the characters you like from comics, comic books, comic strips, uh, video games, cartoons. Uh, Star Trek, Star Wars, etc., or original characters, uh, even um, uh, mythological uh, figures. Uh, just contact me through the comments below or at my email address, which you see right there before you, and we'll see what we can do. And okay, this Bloodstone. It kind of bridges the, 
the gap between the uh, the standard uh, Marvel um, monster comics going back to the 50s and the uh, um, Marvel horror comics of the 70s. You know, uh, go from stuff like, uh, uh, what was it, Fin Fan Foom and, and that that type of thing to uh, Dracula and Werewolf by Night. And this is a great dynamic and very eye-catching cover illustration done by um, uh, Gil Kane. And uh, for, I haven't seen it yet, but I have seen the uh, 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 seen it listed uh, uh, online somewhere. They have a, uh, a large uh, reprint volume using this uh, this cover illustration for the cover of that of the um, the Bloodstone storyline. I don't know how far it goes. It starts starts with this. I don't know how far it goes. Whether it includes the just uh, uh, Ulysses Bloodstone and uh, onto the uh, Monster Hunters or if it includes Elsa Bloodstone. I don't know about that. But I want to get it and find out. Because I like Bloodstone and I was, always wished it, it had been used more. And I used to get that uh, uh, Rampaging Hulk um, title, but I don't offhand, I don't remember. I'd have to have to look in the few issues that I've got left and uh and okay of course uh i don't not sure how recent that uh, volume was was published i think it's brand new and then here is the cover for the second issue to of this storyline and this has got a jack kirby cover oh wow they got Kirby to, to fill fill in, and his is, uh, and it looks like it might be um, John Romita, could be Mike Mar Mike Warrior, uh, doing the inks on that. I'm just just kind of going by the, some little hints that I can't I can't put my finger on for thinking it might be Johnny John Romita. Okay, so here we want to take a look at. Bloodstone. <laughs> and here it says, Fear fraught first issue. He has lived for untold centuries, but today is the day he may die, demon from the depths. And this monster here, which goes unnamed, says, so suddenly appears on the very first page because this is just an introduction and this is kind of reminiscent of uh, uh, the creature from the Black Lagoon and also reminds me of the uh, the creature that Rich Buckler drew for um, what was the title? Journey into Fear? Whatever uh, it was the uh, um, man monster uh, character for uh Atlas Seaboard, and even the uh, the pose is somewhat similar from the splash page on that, and I think it's really good how dynamic it's, it is. Of course, a giant monster, something coming up out of the depths at the at the pier of uh, whatever city this happens to be, New York, San Francisco. I think it's I'm thinking it's San Francisco, if I remember correctly. And uh, here's this guy with this little flute that he's to, uh, tooting on and, it's, and that's how he's calling the monster and the monster goes on a rampage oh all kinds of stuff going on people getting terrorized running away property damage and then from out of the darkness this figure appears and it here it is Ulysses Bloodstone and he very dramatically introduces himself the destiny of Ulysses Bloodstone. Uh, and he goes right into fighting the thing. He's all decked out like a like a big game hunter. And you don't get bigger game than this. And uh, 
goes right into into combat, blasting with with that shotgun. As then they mostly getting tossed around. Yeah, it's Mike Vosberg. I'm not all that familiar uh, uh, with Mike Vosberg's art, but it is he does a, a I think it does a real good real good job of uh, the visual storytelling. I like this close up panel here, and then flips gets puts the shells uh, pr probably slugs uh, in the in his shotgun and starts blasting away at this monster. Now notice that the monster is not as large as we usually. See would see with the uh, the Marvel Monster comics but is larger than stuff he I guess he deals with later um, monster monster uh, doing some fighting gets knocked into the into the river and is unconscious and the monster goes off into the city gives you a good idea of scale there and here then we have some flashbacks, some calm, all this stuff going on inside Bloodstone's head uh, with his cloaked figure and the Bloodstone in his hand and all the facets. As you notice, the Bloodstone was, is, there, is embedded in his chest, giving us a little hint. And he recovers uh, here and gets out, starts to get out of the water. But there's something, and it's not just an octopus, but it looks octopoidal watching him but state remains hidden and now he's on the hunt again for the monster there's the monster rampaging through town more damn ads and rampage rampage he fights 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 and there's the guy flute uh, tootling on his flute and bloodstone hears it as well so i've got to get this creature out of here away from these people People that don't know, who is that guy? Yeah, that sound again, because he can hear it. That sound again. Tweedle, tweedle, tweedle. He's trying to draw the creature away from the people. It, it looks like National Guard got there insanely soon. The cops are there, and he's a, and he's the sound is uh, uh, that he hears. But apparently, no one else can hear. Ah, there it's the guy tootling on that, and he attacks the guy and the, or approaches him. The guy attacks, and then Bloodstone whams him into the side of the building. And then with the stop of the music, the monster is docile and just wanders off, back off into the, into the ocean. And Bloodstone sees that octopoidal creature uh, seems to be leaving the body of the person he just knocked out he grabs the guy he tries to throw his dagger at it uh, to no avail and grabs the guy and takes off and that is the end of part one that was intended for uh, um, uh, where monsters well as well as the second part and here we have part two the lurker within and this is drawn by still uh, um, still Warner writing it and Pat Boyette doing the art chores and not only that he's also doing the lettering and, and so he's penciling inking and lettering and you can tell because you if you're from, real familiar with uh, um, Pat Boyette's work, work that is definitely um, the Pat Boyette lettering there as, as well as you can see inside there and here's the guy he he carried off He's starting to recover in a hotel room. Now this is okay, Pat Boyette is not as dynamic in his in his art as as we've seen with uh, um, uh, Vosberg or many others. And this is the only Marvel work by Pat Boyette that I have ever seen. I can't say that that's all he he ever did, but it's the only th thing that I have ever seen that I know of off offhand. And uh, he's here. He is talking with the fellow, and because he's rec he's recover or talking about the work. oh, and then something happens, and the guy starts transforming into another monster. And who else is not good? Lord. 
smashed through the <laughs> through the uh, hotel room window. But this is real good here, getting getting to see uh, a good representation of the height, the, the distance he has to fall. As well, manages to catch himself on the wires with his gun and zip lines away. I like it's a good touch that it shows the smoke here being a uh, trail being left behind by the friction of uh, going down that that wire and suddenly here we are the Hollywood production of a monster movie it's close by yada 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 we've had that kind of stuff in in these stories before and here's uh, this guy. And I think both of these have appeared before. I'm not positive. I'd have to look. But I think both of these are characters who appeared in, uh, an, or if not them, modeled after um, uh, characters that were in, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. done by uh, Stranko. And I think this is the same director. And I think this actor is the same actor. And uh, they're about about to begin shooting and they hear this uh, broadcast uh, about bloodstone and the monster and stuff and they rush off and maybe we can get some we watch this and maybe we can get some footage out of this just so they bring the cameras crew and here's the monster crashing out of the building as he's still growing getting larger and bloodstone's blasting away with his shotgun again distracting him trying to keep him away Things ha happening, and then the thing invades. Oh, well, uh, Bloodstone starts having vis visions, sensations, enveloped Bloodstone, seeming to sap his life from him. His mind cries out angrily, then suddenly, ah, you again, yes. This is while the, the creature has Bloodstone. And then things happen, the creature in starts to invade Bloodstone's mind and goes back and we're seeing a bit of Bloodstone's origin back to uh, oh, many, many thousands of years ago when he was a caveman and a hunter and he falls this cloaked figure into this cave and he sees this, this inside is this some kind of city, a citadel. He enters and then things happen. Ah! Because the they worked something up, the movie people worked something up and zapped him from, from a generator, d d distracting him, the beastie. And he's shrinking, he's getting smaller. And then finally, he said, my God, my God, blocking out, because he the, overpowered the, uh, the generator. The, uh, the film car, uh, film truck is, uh, is about to, going up in flames and, and the stuff is hitting the fan. And Bloodstone is left unconscious. He's dead. The monster killed him. And if it killed him, what chance do I have? Dun, dun, dun. Hellfire Helix Hex. The conclusion to the origin of Bloodstone. And that is is in this one, but we're not going to cover it. But, but that's a great cover. There too. We're not going to show it. It has more flashbacks. And we see how... He got, gets the bloodstone, and he's still fighting the, this monster, and this uh, other otherworldly being uh, get, gave him power, to, wanted him to be a, a, a receptacle for for him and his power before, and uh, he didn't go for that uh, because he had to betray his people, and then the beastie disappears. Bloodstone survives. And that's that. And that is the end of that. That's what I've got for now, anyway, for Bloodstone from Marvel Presents numbers one and two. And I think it's that just really whetted my appetite because I'm a big, big monster comic fan, and uh, I like love this kind of stuff. And I would have liked to have seen more of this stuff. And I like those monster monster uh, comics. And I like the idea of have a, having monster comics with recurring characters. And they, and they had tried that stuff before with it and uh, the uh, 
it's the Colossus and um, 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 the Golem. And I liked all of those. So that's that's all I've got for you this time. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment, please. And remember, comics are art.